So guys, hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be unboxing our starter kit from, yes you can see it there, Ants HQ. Now we've been talking to this company for a little while now and we really wanted to get on board with this whole Ant starter kit and as I've said before this is something I definitely wanted to get into. It always interested me as a kid and I just think it's really fascinating. So upon opening the box you get the care sheets. Now, my specific ones are the European Giant Red Ants. These are obviously all different depending on what you order, but this is the starter kit for the European Giant Red Ants, and you'll get two care sheets. Now, we'll run through these a little bit later on in the video, but these two care sheets are critical and vital information. It's not information that is not valid to you as an owner of these ants. Is something that is important and they only put the important stuff on there so they won't fill it with stuff that is completely relevant to keeping them in captivity so make sure you definitely have a good couple of reads of them sheets i've probably read through them probably three or four times just to confirm everything and as you can see here as well excellently packaged we've had a few inverts previously not been the best packaged and you know stuff like that but fragile on the box as well so hopefully whoever delivered it took good care of it as you can see loads and loads of newspaper in there so they definitely take care of their quality they don't just chuck it in a box and away it goes and the whole box and all it is is actually just this little cardboard box here so you can see how much in here extra packaging they went to now i didn't know what was actually coming in the kit so i thought i'd better look through it all just to make sure there's nothing in there but all of that, for essentially a little box like that, you can see how much effort they've put in to making sure that customer satisfaction is 100% achieved. Now, upon opening the Ant HQ starter pack, basically we just had a little look through. We weren't too sure what was in there because, again, I'm a complete newbie and this is the first time I've done something like this. But it is something that I definitely want to get into and progress with the channel and to show you guys and keep you guys updated with the journey that we're going to go on so basically what we're going to do here is just run through everything that we've got in the starter kit so here is just a red piece of basically plastic which again we'll go over later in the video but we'll just put that to the side for now and clear some room and then next up here we actually have the sand um, I weren't too sure what this was until reading the instructions later on. Just like Richard in Northern Exotics, I didn't know if it was maybe food or something. Again, I'm a complete novice, so, you know, you're not sure. Here we have the clear oil barrier solution, which, if you want to keep your ants successfully, then this is a vital little bit of kit. You might not think it, but it is. Um, and then here we actually have the test tube that they all arrive safely in. This big one here, which I thought they were in, is actually the nursery tube. And this little box here is the clear acrylic foraging area. So other than that, that is all you get in the kit. And that is everything that you need to start off your European giant red ant colony. All of that stuff with the instructions and the care sheet. And we're going to be going through each of it step by step. So upon arrival of the ant, we actually had no dead on arrivals and they were all looking fit and healthy now i'll give them a little check and everything looked okay to me now in this starting kit we actually have one queen ant which can live between 10 to 15 years and we have six worker ants which can live between 4 to 18 months and obviously we've got a lot of little eggs as well and i checked all of these and i actually couldn't believe in person how big they were compared to seeing photos and videos and then we're basically just looking at all the other little bits of kit, like the nursery. This is basically going to be their home for however long they're in here until we change the setup. Just trying to figure out what everything is and what it's used for, because I'm a novice just as you guys are who might be watching this, or maybe you're not. Maybe you know what you're doing and maybe you know exactly what everything is. But it's important that how little bits of kit like this are really vital to being success in the keeping of these ants. So now we've basically seen and had a little look at all of the kit, we're basically going to run through on getting the box set up. 
Now, when it comes to the box, I actually confirmed with Ant HQ themselves if it was set up correctly, so I didn't have no escapees, and they responded instantly and quickly, and they're extremely helpful in telling me that that is correct and safe. Now, if you guys are struggling, all you've got to do is pause this video and look yourself and do it exactly how I have. So guys, now the little tub has been assembled. We have got everything how it should be. This is it. And as far as the tub goes, when it was in the little box, I thought it would be pretty tricky to put together because I'm not very good at stuff like that, but it was actually really simple. It is literally just a box. And if you're not sure, you can follow this video here, like I did with um, Northern Exotics. Make sure that the curved parts are at the top facing outwards the little hatch with the vents is at the top the big square with the hole in acts as the roof if you would and then all of the side panels are just the clear transparent ones after that you're going to want to insert the actual nest tube which is in my hand here in to the actual side um, that's pretty easily done, and if you can't do it, you can use some of the little stuff here that they provide. Basically, that will just be smeared on the outside of here, but make sure there's no excess when you actually insert it, and there's none in the foraging area there. And then if so, just give it a little wiggle, hold the box firmly, but don't push too hard, because you don't want to ruin the box. It's only acrylic, so you want to make sure that it is all good and all safe, and there's no escapees. So once you have it like this, we'll get on to the next step. So now we have fully assembled the foraging box and have inserted it onto the nursery and the tube. What we are gonna do is just open up the little hatch here and that just comes back on itself like that. And you're gonna use some of the ant barrier that they supply with the starter kits for these. And you're gonna wanna use some sort of tissue or cotton bud, as you can hear in the background. And you're basically going to want to apply it to the square round here. Because if they happen to scale the walls, then that will be the easiest point of escape. Because obviously there is a massive hole in the top of it. So you're just going to want to slowly put a few little drops on there. Not too much. Just let it absorb into whatever you're using. Put it around your finger. And just smear it around the edges. But you've got to remember to make sure that there's no... Um, extra coming off just put on the amount you need make sure that is all smoothed round there and try and get it on the underside as well not just the not just the top of it because if it's on the top of it then if it's effective it will mean they're already out by that point because they're on top of it so if not break it off into a smaller piece go under the inside of it and just apply it where you can this is probably easier to do when it is not assembled but i didn't want to apply it and assemble it wrong where it would actually be on the outside of the box and not the inside so i thought i would assemble it first but it's each to your own the instructions are pretty clear but i just wanted to make sure that i got everything right and sorted obviously this is my first time keeping ants and again very similar to why everyone else has got into it they really interest me, I think they're really cool, but you just don't know enough people that deal with them and do stuff like this. And when the opportunity come up from Ants HQ, I absolutely jumped at it because this is something that, well, like I said, I've always wanted to do. Who hasn't? Like, how cool are these little guys? And honestly, upon arrival, I thought they were actually going to be pretty small and quite, quite hard to film. But bearing in mind, I'm only filming with an iPhone. You can actually see them pretty well and I'm surprised at how big they are. So now you have applied the ant barrier to the foraging box here. We'll get on to the next step. So before we do move on to the next step, like I said about making sure you apply the ant barrier to the inside of the box. Remember as well that has got a hole in and this does shut. So you also want to apply it to the underside of this surface which at the minute like this is the top surface but when it is down and closed with a bottom surface. So again, just a small amount onto a bit of tissue, wipe over the top, and hopefully you'll have no escapees. 
Now, before you go on to add in the sand that they have supplied, you just wanna make sure that the box is assembled correctly and how it should be. Now, because I worry like crazy, I actually confirmed this with Ant HQ and they said it was perfect. But again, they said to me, any questions at all, they're happy to help. And well, I thought I'd ask them a question because I wasn't 100% sure and they were more than happy to help me out and they got back almost instantly. And they've been really helpful through the whole process of this and I genuinely couldn't recommend them enough. So now you just want to make sure that the panels are all fitted how they should be and that there's bands on either side. So we have one at the top there, one at the bottom. You probably can't see them very well. There you go. And that is the same on the other side as well. Also, you want to make sure that the acrylic sheets are removed either side because there's one on each side of the each acrylic panel. Make sure that that is all removed. The bands are on, the box is secure, and then we'll be ready to add the sand. Now, like I said, they give this as a optional extra, but I'd, I'd recommend it personally because that's why they've included it. Why wouldn't you? I think that would give a much more sort of natural environment for them guys. And that is what we try and do on this channel. Try and make everything that we keep in the most naturalist environment. Now, I'm not too sure if you add all of this or not. But I'm just going to use the end of the pipette to just sort of move it about a bit. Now, I feel like I've probably only used about half. But what we're going to do is fill it all up and see... How, how it looks once it's all filled up but like I say it doesn't have to be done but I think it'll look pretty cool so we're going to add all of that in once that is in you just want to give it a little move about so there's not sort of no steep edges or well, not edges but you know no steep like drops or anything and once it's in it should look something like this now which does make more sense adding it all in because that levels up to the hole in the nursery a bit more instead of such a sheer drop. Not that it would bother them too much. So there we go. That is the next step all done. Now moving on to the next step in case you guys think I know what I'm doing. I don't have a clue. But luckily enough they have provided all of the care I need to know about them. So I'm literally just reading through the instructions and going by that because obviously they know a lot better than what I do. So yeah, like I say, a little run through on these quickly. Loads of cool information, temperature, ideal sort of environment for them. The lifespan, the queen, 10 to 15 years. That is crazy, that really surprised me. Workers, four to 18 months. All the stuff that is included in the starter pack, which we have shown you. Then the apply the amp barrier, which is what we just talked about, that is all done. Decorate the foraging area, tick. Carefully put together the foraging area box, which we have done and removed the film, which is all sorted. Yep, looks pretty good to me. And then gently connect the nursery tube farm to the foraging box via the portal provided. That is all done and dusted. Again, remember to use some of the ant barrier if you need to. Now this bit, this is the next step, number five, before we get to the good stuff. They even say it there, look, now comes the fun bit. See, we're all waiting for it. So number five, carefully prepare water into the chimney that's secured by a black cap. Allow to soak and seep through before adding more drops. Once the plaster has fully absorbed the water, water stop. This should be done every seven to 10 days to keep the humidity up within the nest. Secure the rubber lid once finished to prevent humidity escaping so like i say they know best we are going to do exactly as they say so we're just going to try and remove this little grommet off here like that and what we're going to do is get our pipette get some water and we're just going to slowly put it into the chimney until it absorbs all of it, so we'll add a few drops to start with. A bit off camera there, my bad. A few drops, oh, that's a little bit too much. A few drops to start with, I said. 
and then we'll check back in a minute to see if that has absorbed so or not. Now that we've left it a few minutes and that water has absorbed, what we're going to do is add our final bit that we have in the pipette. And then we're going to put the lid on and allow that to soak in. And then we should be all good to go for the fun bit. Now, what we've just done here, this little procedure, this should be done every seven to 10 days to allow humidity within the nest. So you know what that means now. Now comes the fun bit. Gently tip the tube containing your colony into the foraging area by removing the cotton plug. Patience is key here. The ants usually take 20 minutes to 24 hours to move into their new nest. However, it can take longer sometimes. So this bit is going to be, well, I would say fun, but I think I'm a little bit scared. So what we're going to do, sadly, all of these guys have to be tipped backwards because I need to remove this. I don't want to do it too rough. I'm going to keep it on camera because this is a learning experience as much as it is for me as it is you guys as well. So we want to make sure there's none on the underside of that so we don't crush any. And then once this one individual goes, we should be good to go. Right, here's moved down. So what we're going to do is fully remove this. Now I'm a little bit scared. And we are just going to slowly tip it in like that. And as you can see, they are making a run for it out of their own choice. They're going in. They're trying to carry the larvae as well. I feel like they're all sort of panicking, but you don't want to rush the process. Just going to hold it here. Hopefully they shouldn't escape because I've got the ant barrier on. And that guy's escaping. Oh no. There we go. So they're going in. The queen is going back. Now we were pretty successful there. Everyone was in. But we've got this one little guy. Which I assume is probably the troublemaker. Who we had last time. And hopefully he'll just go in, but I don't want to have to like tap it and sort of, you know, put too many vibrations into them because they are little, they are sensitive. But this little guy is just not budging, which is a shame because I want to show you all the action going on in here, here and here. And I also want to make sure there's no escapees, but this guy likes his old home and he's pretty happy to stay where he is. So... Back to what we said earlier, we might have to cut back in a minute when he decides to actually come out. So there we go, they're all in at last. That little guy was not budging and then he lost grip and fell in, so unlucky. But here we go, look, we can see all of them moving and already it is instantly interesting to me. I think it is so fascinating to see. And you can see in here as well, I've got a little bit of reflection from the light above me, but... There you go, you can see them doing their thing, checking it out, exploring, seeing what's happening, going through each of the layers. And then they're in the little foraging box as well. And now if you look at that, I think that is pretty cool. They all know what they're doing, they've all got their own little jobs. They're all checking it out and panicking and, uh, you know, but... This is something that I instantly knew when the opportunity come up, I'd want to do it. And I'd want to definitely give it a go, like a good go as well. So hopefully it will all go okay. But you can't say that these guys haven't had the best start with us here at ARC Exotics because look at the setup. I think these guys have had a very good start. So hopefully that will bode well for the future and they'll be on their way. So reading the care sheet a little bit more, the smaller workers will actually be called nurses and their specific job is to look after the young brood like they are now and sorting everything out how they should be. There are some of them, like this other guy in the corner, not bothered at all. 
but some of the others are pretty bothered and they have the larvae with them and they're moving about and yeah so that is pretty cool like i say i've learned something new there today i didn't know that and i think that is pretty cool so after a few questions and a little bit of looking into it I've basically found out that the workers or the nurses, the smaller workers, will take the eggs and feed it liquid and protein. So that is why for these guys, which are the European giant red ants, are really important to have a protein source. As it does say on the care sheet that they are provided with freshly killed live food or small live food, appropriate sized. So what the young nurses will do is actually feed all of the eggs like they are moving here and provide them with liquid and protein. So hopefully they're happy and healthy. As far as it goes here, they are think by the looks of it, they are checking to see if there is any left over. And there is one just there. But other than that, I think they've got all of them. I think they're all doing their sort of final checks to make sure. And other than that, then they'll be moving back into the tube and getting sorted. So just as I said about that last remaining egg, they have now picked it up and they're all like panicking mums trying to get it indoors and well, what they think is virtually in safety. As you can see, they're very inquisitive. And just by looking at them, you can tell that they're smart. Just... I don't know, like the body language and a lot of stuff you can read. And they don't look like they're running scared. They look like they're sort of more inquisitive and what's going on. But as you can see here, very, very cool. And this is something that I could just sit here watching. I keep meaning to film the rest of this video with what you have to do, etc, etc, with other pieces. But every time I keep looking back at the box, I keep seeing little movement. And I want to know what's going on. Now, this is such a shame. You won't be able to see this very well, but I will. So I've just basically been sat here for the last 20 minutes watching them. And what they've done is, I don't know if this is something they're known for doing, but they've kind of formed a chain. So there was eggs here in the nest, in the foraging box. And then they were moved to here. And then they were picked up by another one and moved to here. And then picked up by a different one and moved to here. So none of them sort of completed a full journey. They'd put one down and they'd go back for more. And then the ones in this area would go through and grab it and so on. So we was about to get on to the next step of adding the acrylic. And I will tell you the reasons for that later on. But again, I got sidetracked. I was reading the care sheet that they provided me. And they were saying that every six to seven days, you want to feed your ant colony a source of protein which obviously is something like a freshly killed live insect. So um, something like a small cricket, small locust, mealworms, waxworms, stuff like that that are high in protein. Now you either want to kill it and put it in there, so it's still got a little bit of movement, or if it's small enough, it can be live, but obviously it's a new colony. And if you put live food in there, and they're scared of their current environment, which they are, you then don't want the cricket or whatever live food source you put in there to spook them. So for the first couple of feeds, I think I'll do a freshly killed cricket and I'll see how they go with that because I'd hate to spook them. And you can also do plain boiled chicken strips, which who would have thought that these little ants love chicken? But this is actually important as it serves for nourishment for the young larvae that will feed on this to develop into the new working ants of your colony. So that just proves how important that is because basically if you want hard working ants in your colony you have to feed them the right stuff. It's like us, we won't go to work because we have no energy if we don't eat. We've got to eat the right stuff for us to work hard and it's the exact same for these little guys here and I absolutely love them. So now everyone is in and settled, we are all good. I had a little head count. We have one queen and then we have six workers. So obviously over time we want to keep track of numbers, make sure everything is how it should be, make sure there's progression, growth, etc. So yeah, and like I say, just looking at them now, you can see that little guy in the foraging area just scaling the wall. They're just so, so inquisitive and I never knew that. So yeah, it's just so cool. They're still faffing about with the eggs in the nest area at the back, but we haven't finished the actual initial setup yet. So you also get 
this basically what is red acrylic um sort of plastic you'd say you know exactly what i mean by the sound of it that sort of stuff what we're gonna do oh you can see me in the reflection there what we're gonna do is cut this to size and insert it from here to here and by insert i don't mean like inside i mean wrap it round the actual tube itself so if we move it a little bit closer what we're going to do is from here to where the little um, cap is we're going to insert i keep saying insert we're going to put this little acrylic around the outside secure it with two of these at one either end and basically this gives off a bit more of a darker theme in the tunnel making the ants not feel so scared and not so vulnerable out in the open Obviously, if this was a natural environment, the ants wouldn't have daylight in this tube because this tube would be underground. And like I said, we want to replicate the most realistic environment for these guys. So that is providing a little bit of shade and dark. So we're going to get on and do that now. So what we're going to try and do now is just insert this over the top of the tube. So what we've done is we've cut it to size. Bear in mind as well, you don't need the underneath of the tube to be done because they can't get underneath. The walls are fairly high, so really it only needs to cover the actual clear glass here. So instead of doing it all the way around, I'm just going to cut to size and then fold it over. And then what I'm going to do is basically just probably cut off the excess once that's done and then secure it with these little bands. And hopefully we will be set up and ready to go so after a little bit of cutting and trimming to size we have loads of excess so don't worry if you mess it up and we've got a free off cuts here so what I've basically done is you don't want to have the band right at the end of that side and one right at the end of that side because if the band moves slightly to, for example, this side on the left, it would then come off. And if the band on the end of this side slightly moved to the right, then it would come off. So to prevent it from coming off, keep them sort of evenly spaced in the middle. Now what I've done, so I can see every single part of what they're doing, I've put one band where the wall is in the nursery. Oh, this little guy's just chilling. And I've put the other band where the second wall is. So then I don't miss out on none of the action. I've also used two little bands here just to make sure it is tightly on the end. And once that is set in place, I'll remove them. But other than that, that is our full setup of the Ant HQ starter pack for the giant European red ant. So now what we're going to do is a quick little overview on everything that we've got in this package. Now, if you guys want to get your hands on something like this or this specific set, especially with the European giant red ants, then you can. So this set is £50 and what you'll get is everything that I've shown you in this video. And to be fair, it's everything you need to have your perfect starter kit. So obviously you'll get the nursery tube ant farm, which is what we've got here. You'll get the clear acrylic foraging area box, which by the looks of it, they're all foraging in now. <laughs> you'll get a pipette, which we have there to add the water in. You'll get a clear oil barrier solution, which is just below it to prevent them from escaping and running around your house. And you'll also get the sand, which is also in there as well. And obviously you get the test tube, which they're arriving, which obviously isn't included because you don't have it as a day-to-day -day care for these guys. But it might come in handy if you're planning on growing the colony out bigger in the future. So always keep it because you don't actually know if it will come in handy. So other than that, this is everything you get for the Ants HQ European Giant Red Ant Starter Kit. Now we're going to go place them in the reptile room in a darkened area and out of direct sunlight because that is what is recommended from the experts over at Ants HQ. So let's go and do that. Now I thought I would try and put a little mealworm in there. Now because they're a new colony to me and they would just settled in, I thought they'd be quite scared. I dropped it in there, one of them walked past it, the other one acknowledged that it was alive 
and jumped on it and done about 10 barrel rolls and grabbed hold of it. And then once he grabbed hold of it, more come out of the nursery and started attacking it. So it's like he knew that he needed help and others come out to assist with him. And now they've all ganged up on him and basically are eating him. And I think what they're trying to do is basically move him into the nursery. Maybe because it will be harder for the prey item to escape or something like that. But they're definitely trying to move it into the nursery because I put it at the very start of the foraging box. They have now moved it all the way down to the bottom. And as you can see here, they're sort of prepping it to go into the nursery. Now, I didn't think they'd eat. I thought I'd put it in and monitor it and keep an eye on it because I didn't want it to work its way up to the back of the nursery. But they have taken it very well and they're eating really, really aggressively, which to me is pretty cool because I didn't think they'd eat that aggressively and they've proved me wrong. Now, as you can see, they've taken their time with this. It's not something that they're rushing um, and they're not sort of all on it now. At first they were all attacking it and now it only seems to be sort of one or two at a time and then they'll sort of switch over for another two to come in and start on it but once it's been in there for a little while they basically sort of lower the the rate of trying to work it down and basically now by the looks of it what I said earlier is they're trying to sort of work it around towards the front and hopefully end up with it in the nursery and I do, I do think this is just because it is easier for them to maintain it in there. And that is their strong point because that is what they live in, that is what they thrive in. And that is essentially what they feel safe in. There is a foraging area is something where they don't necessarily feel safe in because it's there to forage, if that makes sense. There is the nurseries like their home. So over time you see them sort of slowly wearing it down and... To be fair, you can see the power behind them because when they give it a nip, the mealworm does move quite a bit. So you know that it's registering the actual nip from the ants. So guys, that is our Ant HQ unboxing video on a complete starter kit for the European giant red ant. Now, we have some care information here that I didn't quite manage to reach out and let you guys know about while setting it up. I missed a few little paragraphs and I feel like these two bits of sheet, they've not just copy and pasted on the first website and just overloaded you with irrelevant stuff. This two pages is all the specific details that you need, not stuff that doesn't matter to you and your setup that you've now got. They're completely relevant and they're, some, they're, they're stuff that you need to know. So some of the stuff that I missed out was... So I'm just trying to think here. So for example, this part here, it says temperature is 18 to 25 C is ideal for the development of this species. However, during the winter months of November to mid February, temperatures should be kept at five to 15 C. This ensures that the ants can enter a period of dormancy and the queen can have a pause in egg laying, which again, to you as a keeper, is critical information. Therefore, ensuring her well-being and enabling her to lay masses of eggs during spring and summer, which require demanding energy levels. So, as we all know in this hobby, with anything that you breed, it is exhausting and knackers them out. Stuff like leopard geckos, ball pythons, stuff like that. It's the exact same for these little guys. Just because they don't need heat and big tanks, doesn't mean they don't act the same. They're completely the same, so they need a rest period, basically. And that cool temperature will allow them to rest. So obviously that is important for you as a keeper to know because if you had it in a reptile room at a constant 25 all year round, then they wouldn't know when that would stop. So they'd just keep producing until they'd get exhausted, which is not ideal for you. Um, so there you go. And there was another piece as well, which is just here saying, lastly, sugar and water or honey water, sugar and water mixed to 2.1 ratio, uh, droplets can be given every week also via the pipette that they've supplied in the kit with, with what we've had today. This is a little treat for the work and ants, which will use sugar as energy. There you go. Go about their daily activities, almost like a battery recharging. So there you go. That is, that is exactly what you need to know as a keeper. That's not something that 
you'd read and then think, well, why did I just waste time reading that? That's that's important information. So, I mean, I feel quite sorry for them. They're called working ants. Do you know what I mean? They work for the queen. It's, it's crazy. It sounds crazy saying it on a reptile video or a animal video. But, yeah, they're little workers. Do you know what I mean? So you've got to reward them. You've got to treat them. And like I said, on that bit of care sheet, that is important to them. You know, that gives them that recharge. It gives them that boost, you know. Like us with caffeine or stuff like that, it's the exact same. We need that little boost to sort of get going and get moving. That's the exact same for them little guys. So other than that, like I say, all of the all of the food is on here, like the crickets, mealworms, grasshoppers, flies, honey sugar, water, the boiled chicken strips. We'll have to do a little video on that and do some boiled chicken strips because I think that'll be pretty good. You've seen in the previous clip before this, I, I fed a tiny mealworm. And I thought I'd monitor the feeding because I didn't want to put it in there, leave it and no one go for it and the mealworm make its way down to the queen. So I watched it and like I said, it stumbled upon it and bang, I couldn't believe how engaging they are, how sort of ferocious they are. And again, it does say on here that they are an aggressive species and it is perfect description. Like these two sheets, if you want your ants to thrive, these two sheets are critical. So other than that, I can't really describe it in any more of a way that Ants HQ have done an absolute amazing job in setting me up. Thank you again. And like I said to you guys, if you want to do the same as me and sort of join me on the journey with it, then jump on, you know, get with it. And they're so good. And I'm not just saying that from my point of view, like customer experience, 10 out of 10 satisfaction. You can ask them any question, whether it seems silly or not. So like I said to you previous, this morning, I asked them if the box was set up okay. Do you know what I mean? And they're probably thinking it's a box. But they were polite, they're quick, you know, it's, they know what they're doing basically. And who doesn't love messaging someone that knows what they're doing? It's ideal for you, the customer, and then the supplier. So it's a win-win. So other than that, thank you for watching today's video. And now I can't wait to do loads of videos involving these little guys eating and foraging and different setups and growing the colony, stuff like that. It's going to be really good. So if you want to follow the journey, then make sure you subscribe and like the video. Drop a little comment of what you want to see me do with the colony next as far as ideas go for like growing out and stuff like that. And if you guys want any ants yourself, obviously Ants HQ, you know where to go. I will put all the links where they should be and also get over to my Instagram if you want to check them out over there. That is how I found them and messaged them and that is how we've had our whole conversation through there. So get over there, see what they've got and look at some cool setups. Thank you for watching today's video.